I'm having a hard time, first of all, finding anything out there. And when there is something out there for a three bedroom, it's two grand or up, not including utilities. And I don't even make that in a month. Muskoka's housing crisis is continuing to grow as more renters desperately seek accommodations in an area where there seems to be little to offer and what is available is out of price range for many. Like Bree Nikolic, a mother of two who is being forced to leave her current rental unit because the owner is selling the property soon. But because she's unable to afford a three bedroom at the current prices, she's forced to make sacrifices to her own comfort to give her kids their much needed privacy. I'm keeping an eye out for just a two bedroom because I can't afford a three bedroom. So I did reach out to Facebook in regards to if it was legal or not and everybody's telling me do what you got to do mama. Um, a lot of support from Facebook in regards to me taking the couch and letting my boy and girl have a bedroom. Nikolic isn't exaggerating about pricing either. Your TV Muskoka recently checked out some of the properties being advertised across the district. In our research, we found three bedroom homes were going for an average of $2,100 plus utilities. Two bedrooms are priced at around $1,600 plus utilities. And one bedrooms are at an average of $1,400 plus utilities. There are affordable housing options, but they come with restrictions, like one two-bedroom affordable housing rental unit offered at $843 per month, but the renter can't be making more than just over $33,000 a year. So what is causing this push in prices and lack of availability in Muskoka? According to one local landlord who wished to remain anonymous while speaking with your TV Muskoka, the issue of pricing comes down to a few things. The landlord says the cost of living overall continues to rise, pointing to Gravenhurst saying town councillors tell me they have no other source of revenue because of a lack of commercial industrial, so it's all on the backs of residential taxpayers. The landlord also pointed to the cost of materials jumping due to COVID-19 as well. I just did a reno on my little apartment and I'm now $25,000 more in debt. Your TV Muskoka reached out to the District of Muskoka's Director of Programs, Jackie Matice, to find out why the waitlist is so long and what the district is doing to bring more housing availability to Muskoka. The district is responsible for uh, housing in Muskoka and uh, especially on the community or social housing uh, area. So we do own and manage a number of buildings in Muskoka that uh, fall under community housing and there is a wait list and the district uh, is responsible for that wait list. At this point, uh, as of the end of January, we would have approximately 590 individuals or families or households on that wait list. Uh, the wait list can be up to eight years. Uh, what I can tell you is that the, the most significant group on that list is looking for one bedroom units. So that's where that wait list may be up to seven or eight years. So in those cases, we really try to work with the individual to say, how can we support you as you're on that wait list until you actually secure uh, sustainable housing? So that's when we would look at that rent supplement or some sort of uh, rent subsidy or support to bridge them through that gap. Um, the, the wait list for a two bedroom, three bedroom or four bedroom units is uh, not as long. So, you know, the important thing is to work with us to get the application uh, in place and to make sure you're on the wait list. And in the meantime, we'll provide other supports and services where we can. So projects are in the works, but for someone like Nikolic, it's not a comfort right now. It, it's, it's a daily struggle. I'm stressed out to the max. I don't work enough, with, especially with COVID right now. But even when I do have a good month, I don't make enough to pay rent, let alone utilities, let alone food for my kids. Sorry, I'm going to start crying. Okay. We eat junk food because that's all I can afford. I can't afford to buy healthy meals, even for myself. Um, there are times I'll go without a meal to feed my children. There's things they need, um, winter gear and stuff like that, that they go without because I just, there, there is no money because everything goes to rent and no one no one considers the utilities on top of that no one considers the food you got to put on the table the the laundry stuff the, the stuff for your pets it, it, there's just no income i live paycheck to paycheck and even that's a struggle